Thanksgiving message that I will be sharing with you is in regard to why the church exists and what must be the business of the church. We all have heard from the scriptures and we all have learned that the church exists to do the business of the kingdom. We are in a kingdom business and we exist as a church to continue the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and to do the business of God. So I'll be talking about witnessing. I'll be talking about since we are approaching Christmas and the whole idea why we have to celebrate Christmas because peace on earth has come to mankind. The peace of God has come to mankind and the tidings of the kingdom and the good news of the kingdom has come to us and we need to really share and become witnesses of the kingdom. So the first thing that we would like to ask is why do we have to witness for the good news of the kingdom? Why do we have to bring the kingdom and witness for the kingdom? If you are going to look at your Bibles in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, and Mark chapter 1, verse 17, the background of which we are going to go deeper into the Je Jesus model is that witnessing or evangelism or sharing the kingdom of God was first commanded by Christ. So when he started his ministry, the first command that he ever gave was Come and I will make you fishers of men. So it was his first command. Another thing that we learned about witnessing or becoming witnesses of the kingdom is that in Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission will tell us that it was Jesus' last command. So it was not only Jesus' first command, but it was also Jesus' last command. Anything that Jesus did in the middle and everything in his three-year ministry were all in line with the context of the first command, come and I will make you fishers of men, and in the last command, go and make disciples. The miracles of Jesus, the feeding of the 5,000, the healing in the pool of Bethsaida, the casting out of demons were all demonstration of his power, but at the same time to disciple and to mentor his disciples. That everything that they learn about Christ is to remember that in the first place, Christ called them to be fishers of men. And lastly here on his, in Matthew chapter 28, when he gave the great commission, it was Jesus' last command. So the church exists because of Jesus' first command and Jesus' last command. In fact, it was demonstrated in Acts chapter 4, verse 31 to 33, that the good news is the never-ending message of the apostles and those who believe in Christ. The reason why the church exists in Acts chapter 4 because they continue to preach the good news. It was the business of the church in Acts chapter 4 to witness and to share the good news. Again, all the epistles in the scriptures, especially chapter uh, 1, uh, chapter 2 and verse 4 of 1 Timothy was that God's desire for all men is that everyone will come to repentance. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9, that everyone will come to repentance. The church exists because it was the design of Christ and the longing for, of Christ that the church will carry on the first command and the last command, which is to become fishers of men and to go and make disciples. Now, I would like to uh, ex you know, um, encourage every one of us, if you can 
you pull out your cell phones and, and do some kind of mathematics because if you are going to look at the ministry of Jesus Christ, Jesus roughly like more or less three, three years of ministry with his disciples. And discipleship is patterned with the way Jesus Christ did ministry with his disciples. He did ministry with the crowd. He ministered to their needs, but he showed the his disciples how to minister to the crowd so if you are going to look at what discipleship is all about if you are going to log in the hours that his disciples had with Jesus so you probably say three years times 24 hours and times you have your your was this with you so if you are going to log in, you have 365 days in one year times three. And then times 24. How many hours did the disciples of Jesus spend with him in a discipleship experience? How many? 26,000. 280, right? Okay, so if you are going to also log in your discipleship experience with Jesus, I want you to do your own personal thing, okay? Um, put how many years you have become a Christian. You have been a Christian. How many years? Okay. Okay, put, put how many years you have been a Christian. Now, remember in one day, Okay, how many years, right? In one day, account how many hours you spent to become the disciple of Christ. So how many years? And then how many, how many hours you had as a disciple for Christ? In one day that you, you, you just, you know, you, you give your time, your hours, just how many hours? Any answer? Personal. Yeah, personal. Not, 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 not Don't copy your husband's answer. <laughs> Does it count the worship service? Is this your your one on one? When you believe, because you may be able to be in a worship service, but you, it's not really a discipleship experience that you have with Christ. So you can you cannot consider it as a discipleship encounter. A discipleship encounter is that. You have encountered the presence of Christ and you have grown from that encounter. You have followed Christ. You have known Him. You have learned of Him and you have shared about Christ to your friends. That's a, a discipleship encounter. It doesn't mean that you will be in the church that's counted as a discipleship experience because you may be in church and, and you are actually not paying attention because you've been sleeping most of the time. <laughs> So that is not that is not a um a, a, a discipleship encounter. So do you have the number? What's your number? Not enough. <laughs> not enough. Not enough. Yeah. See, the reason why I encourage you to have your own number because a discipleship encounter with Christ and to be a church is not equated by the many years you've been in the church or been a Christian. The three years discipleship encounter that the disciples had with Jesus was the kind of experience that the church must adopt nowadays. That's the discipleship that we have to learn from, the model of Christ. What is the model of Christ? The model of Christ was that he declared in John chapter 4, verse 33. If you have your Bibles with you, John chapter 4, verse 33. Jesus said, Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? Je verse 34, My food, Jesus said, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work do you not say four months more and then the harvest i tell you open your eyes and look at the fields they are ripe for harvest even now the reaper draws his wages 
Even now, he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I send you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. And this was like was Jesus trying to provide a message to those who will come and follow him and exist as a church in a local congregation because Jesus was actually saying here that do not be consumed by the material and the outward physical manifestations and perception of what it is like to be successful as a disciple, as a church. Do not equate the success of the ministry by how big your building is. Do not equate the success of the ministry by how many members present in a worship service. I was really like, when I was a younger pastor, I, my desire is to really be a pastor of a, a big congregation with like 100,000 <laughs> congregation. I was led to believe that I will be successful if I have a lot of church members coming into the worship service and I'm preaching the gospel. Lo and behold, God rebuked me that success in Christ Jesus was demonstrated in here in verse 34 where Jesus said, My food, the one that can satisfy me, the one that can really energize me, of course, I will be energized by Mrs. Smith's um, preparation later on. But the one that can really spiritually give me a lasting fulfillment, a kind of satisfaction that you have never experienced and you knew it. There is that eternal joy that is swelling within you when you do and obey the will of Christ. There is that overflowing kind of excitement that you love doing the ministry because this is the food of Christ that you are participating. You share and participate in the festivity of Christ's food and the food of Christ was to do the will of God. What was the context here? What was the context when Jesus said to do the will of God? The context here was a conversation of Christ Jesus with the Samaritan woman in the well. And the Samaritan woman came to know Christ. Jesus said, I am he who you are talking about. And, it, and she was like, really? And she ran back to the village. And what did she do? Told everyone in the village. I mean, I, if I was the woman, I could have a, a great excuse, right? Oh, no, I'm not going to tell them about Christ because they knew, they know my, you know, they know my past. I mean, they've been watching the tele television and I am a very popular lady. Everybody is following on entertainment news and they knew what I, they, I have done. I'm not going to be sharing about Christ, but she, despite of her past, Christ erased and deleted her past, that the message of the gospel was so powerful that the people haven't seen her past, but they have seen the change and the transformation that Christ has done in her life. You see, so many times we limit the power of the gospel to open the eyes of the people that we are going to share because we have these preconceived ideas that our limitations can hinder our witnessing. And so Jesus said, my food is to do the will. The woman was there proclaiming about Christ. Hey, come on, everyone. Somebody told me that this was the kind of light. I, I've never met this man before, but she knew everything. And, she's, and he said that he is the Messiah. This is the Messiah that we've been longing for. And, and, and what happened was that all the village people came over and met Christ. And what the scripture tells us was this. 
prior to this, to this verse 34. If you have your Bibles with you. What happened was this. His disciples came and... Rabbi, we have brought something from Jack in the Backs. So, because you are very hungry and you, have, you were very thirsty, so this is the food. And Jesus said, Oh man, verse 32, I have food to eat that, know, that you know nothing about. And he goes on, then his disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him food? You see, what satisfies the heart of Christ, what satisfies the heart of Christ is when an individual is transformed, repented, and has been ushered back into his kingdom of righteousness. Christ is honored, is glorified if our church is in the business of bringing people into the kingdom of Christ. And it's so sad that churches today are in the business of making their church grow more and more, but not really fully understanding that the main priority of the kingdom is that people will be ushered into the kingdom, not into the church. That's why one of the uh, believers was saying to me, was telling me is that, Pastor, please help us uh, with our vision and our goal that we will bring people to the church. Our goal is not to bring people to the church. Our goal is to bring people to the kingdom of righteousness. This is our goal. This is what success is all about. That Nipomo um, All for Christ Fellowship is so successful that even though we are but small, we brought people to the kingdom of Christ. And we are so very happy, even though there are just few of us, you know, our, our knees are, are already like, my, my friend was calling me, uh, oh, Pastor Romy, you are old. And I told him, no, please don't call me old. I just had arthritis. <laughs> don't call me old. I just have arthritis. So the food of Christ, and what happened here in verse 30, uh, 39 Many of the Samaritans from the town believe in him because of the woman's testimony. Many of the people here in Nipomo and Santa Maria believe the Lord Jesus Christ because of our testimony. We testify. We testify for the kingdom. We testify for Christ. That's why many believe here in Nipomo because we testify. And Jesus said, I'm satisfied. I have my full, I'm fulfilled with this church. I'm happy with this congregation. I'm like, I am so happy with this congregation. Why? Because through our testimony, we see people, many of the Samaritans believe in him from the town. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. There were a few things here. Jesus said, this is my food. And not only that, Jesus was willing to. What did he do here? The Samaritans urged Jesus to stay for how many how many days? Two more days. Do you have any idea how difficult would, would it be for his disciples? Let alone Jesus Christ talking to the Samaritan woman and asking for water. It must have been so difficult. But Jesus demonstrated to his disciples, Hey guys, I know that you are not used of eating with your hands. Because you have to really make sure that all the utensils are ceremonially clean. But we are going to stay here for two more days. And the disciples were like, yeah, yeah, the 
we're staying for two days. No, it was not. The Bible was silent here. They were not excited, I guess. They were not excited. Why? Because the cultural differences and the inconvenience and the discomfort with a Jewish group living within the Samaritan village were in uncleanliness, the unrighteousness that they their lifestyle would have been so difficult for the disciples to live by. But Jesus stayed more, and the Bible tells us, and many more, many villagers came to become believers. They became believers. Brethren, one of the things that the churches have failed to realize that if we are not willing to get out from our comfort zone, and, and be with people, and just be with people, and, and the church is waiting for the people to come to the church, and you, that's the time that you share the gospel, we are not going to fulfill the appetite of Christ, so to speak. Because we need to spend time with people. We need to be there two more days out from our schedule. The discomfort that we may have and I mean how, how would it be for, for my, for my uh, friend um, brother Tony if you are going to live with us and I would say please live with us for two days and the food that we eat is dried fish dried fish and and rice every day rice because filipinos will not live by bread alone but by every rice that comes out from our i mean we we live rice and then you have uh, dried fish with tomatoes and vinegar that you dip with that that's that's your food are you gonna be okay it's like <laughs> This was the kind of discomfort that Jesus had and his disciples. And Jesus said, my food is to do the will of God who sent me and to finish his work. So he was able to share the gospel to the woman. And now he's going to finish his work, God's work, by being with them. And many people came to believe and became believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we cannot produce believers if we will not follow the example and the model of Christ. Christ exemplified compassion and patience. Compassion and patience. Compassion and patience so that the cultural, cultural barriers will be bridged by His love. Cultural barriers will be bridged by His love. I hope and pray that as a church we exist to do the business of the kingdom. In the business of kingdom as Jesus clarified, my food is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish His work. What was the will of God? The will of God that Jesus Christ gave the first command, Come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Last command, go and make disciples. It was the early church lifestyle to witness for the kingdom. And it is God's desire that all people will come to know him and be ushered into his righteousness and into his kingdom. Brethren, we are but small, yet we are fulfilling the heart of Christ. Because in the heart of Christ, his food is to do the will of him who sent him and to follow and to finish his work. Let it be that our church will also be the same. That our existence, our food, our food, that even though we do not have food after this, because all the food are already uh, packed and be loaded to my van and bring 
you know, I'll bring it back to LA. Sorry. But our food, seriously speaking, is to do, to do the will of God and to finish His work. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the opportunity that you have given to us to learn from your word and to have the, this perspective right now opening our hearts and our minds that the food of Christ is to do the will of him who sent him, to do the will of God who sent him and to finish his work. This church as well exists because we are going to do the will of Christ Jesus our Lord and to finish his work. And all God's people say, Amen.